So people often come to me asking, hey Sticks, what is a good MMO or what are some good MMOs for people that happen to have a Lala file for a computer? And while I would question how you can go about trusting any Lala file after the events that transpired with the Sultana over in Ulda, this video right here is my response. Quick shout out to our patrons over on Patreon. This allows you to directly support us if you're interested. Every patron will have their name appear at the beginning of every single YouTube video, and you'll be immortalized in the MMO genre forever. Now, these games, these MMOs specifically, are not the best MMOs. That is not the purpose of this video. I have a separate list for those available, but these are definitely some of the better options out there if you don't have the tech capable of running something like Black Desert or Final Fantasy XIV. Now, if you're interested in the specs for each of these games specifically, I have those available for every MMO on our website, MMOBuy.tv. Before we jump into the video though, I want to thank today's sponsor, Counterside. This is a brand new anime RPG that I have covered in the past because it has a beautiful anime aesthetic with a, a focus on certain assets that I can totally get behind and that I know you'll all find equal enjoyment from. If Counterside looks like something that you're interested in playing, pre-registration is currently available on iOS, on Android, and via their official website. Simply click that link in the description and the pinned comment below to join the fun. First and foremost, this is an anime game for anime fans by anime fans. I've seen a surplus of screenshots all over social media and players are excited. Excited for the gorgeous live 2D graphical style. Excited to be able to become enthralled in another gripping story. This is a gacha game at its core, so it carries with it a certain degree of chance with regards to obtaining waifus and husbandos, of which there are many gorgeous characters. Honestly, this really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone though. Heroes fit a variety of different class archetypes, counter, soldier, mechanic, and ship to name a few, and once obtained, you'll be able to build different team combinations to utilize in battle, both in PvE and PvP. Again, pre-registration is currently available right now, so if this looks interesting to you at all, I'd advise you to go ahead and get ready to try this out. Plus, if you use my coupon code below, you'll get some sweet in-game rewards. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. We'll be tackling this alphabetically, beginning first with Alods Online. Alods was once considered to be the WoW killer. The term imitation is the finest form of flattery is not to be understated here, with Alods both looking and playing like a higher definition WoW at the time. It had a similar selection of classes to choose from, similar races, a similar cartoony graphical style. It utilizes a full tab target combat system. It had voice acting. Honestly, everything about Allods was incredibly high quality. If it weren't for the publisher behind the game, I dare say that this could, this would be considered one of the better free MMOs out there. But it was inhibited by a significant pay-to-win business model and thus buckled under the weight of the publisher's greed. Nevertheless, disregarding pay-to-win, this was such a fun MMO to play. Despite some people arguing that there aren't a lot of issues with DC Universe Online, I have found it to be nothing but entertaining. Having so much freedom and so much control over your character is almost unparalleled within the genre. Not only being able to customize their physical appearance, but their superpowers. Things like flight, like super speed, like super strength, and lesser abilities like elemental affinity or invisibility. You name it, you can probably do it in this game which allows for some seriously sick class archetypes. It also features characters that are right out of DC Comics, Batman, the Joker, the Flash, Reverse Flash. So if you're a comic book fan, this is a story, a collection of stories that you're not gonna wanna miss. And the voice cast, man, unmatched. The combat was also a unique hybrid between tap target and action with different abilities, allowing for each respective style. And graphically, for an MMO set in the modern era, it looked pretty good, especially given its age. Dragon Nest is generally considered to have some of the best action combat and PvP in the entire MMO genre. And while I never got to participate in the PvP at any point in time, during the, the time that I spent streaming this, I did play it for roughly 20 hours straight. And in that time, 
I did in fact get to witness the combat, which at least from the class that I chose was pretty damn good given when this was released. I think people's perception of the combat is largely due to nostalgia, but I can definitely agree that it is one of the better combat systems employed in the anime scene. The game is a hub MMO, one of two included in this list, meaning that it isn't open world like the vast majority of these titles or of titles in general. You'll encounter players within towns and cities, but otherwise, the majority of content takes the form of cycling through hundreds of dungeons. Graphically, it holds up fairly well. It's it, it, it's got a a pretty unique graphical style to it that that I really haven't seen in other MMOs. Its story though is like reading a 2,000 page book every 30 minutes. Dragon Raja is a cross-platform MMO, one of two. This is also arguably one of the least straining on my PC, given that it was developed as well, first and foremost, a mobile game, and was then ported over quite successfully, I might add, to PC at a later date. Cross-platform MMOs are becoming more and more popular lately, and while Dragon Raja still retains the limitations of being a mobile title, it's one of the better ones out there, one that doesn't necessarily repeat the same mistakes that are so typically replicated amongst mobile games. Graphically, Surprisingly, it holds up much better than most anime MMOs. The combat is a unique hybrid between action and tap target, but the pay to win is absolutely menacing. But I mean, this is a Chinese mobile game at its core, so that's to be expected. If pay to win is not an issue for you though, then by all means, this is a fantastic, fun MMO. This is the only other hub MMO in this list, and is arguably also what I believe to be the best action MMO available across the entire MMO genre. Dungeon Fighter Online is seemingly infinite depth in terms of class diversity, with each class having their own unique story to be told. It has a gorgeous art style that isn't replicated in any other MMO I've seen. Its action combat is some of the fastest, the flashiest, chaotic mess of abilities spam that I have ever seen that always just leaves me sitting there seizing up in my seat after playing for prolonged periods of time. And while it is a hub MMO, it's also different in so that it employs a horizontal style of gameplay, allowing you to move left, to move right, and very slightly up and down. This is also the most played MMO in the entire world, thanks largely in part to China. Yes, there is actually an MMO based on the popular Dungeons & Dragons intellectual property. Why wouldn't there be, right? And admittedly, given how old this game is, it's actually pretty damn good. Now, I will preface this by stating that I've only played it for a couple of hours in total, but in my time spent playing, I witnessed a need for strategy, for dungeon crawling, an action combat system, the makings of a great quality MMO. However, it's so obscure that almost nobody knows it exists. I'm honestly not certain as to why that is. I guess maybe, this might help just a, a little bit in aiding in the exposure of the game. Now, if you haven't played it yet, you honestly need to try. Think Neverwinter, but uh, more Dungeons and Dragony. Flife, the first MMO that I played to allow for aerial exploration. Man, those were truly the days. Back when I first played this, I thought that it was going to be your everyday run-of-the-mill generic anime MMO. and. Then I got my very first broomstick and I just took to the skies and immediately fell in love. I powered through all the way to level 55 I think and got my second, my third class advancement. Holy crap, I, I genuinely miss the days when every zone was packed with players, but you know what, uh, enough about the past. Flife definitely looks a little bit dated and it's tapped hardware combat most definitely leaves a little to be desired, but what it does, it still does better than the vast majority of its competition. There's a reason why it's still significantly more played in games like Fiesta, Eden Eternal, Grand Fantasia, and the rest. And I mean, you can fly, which <laughs> you can't in the other titles listed. Mabinogi is arguably the most unique type of MMO that I've ever played. It's a, a full-fledged MMO with an emphasis on the social aspect of the genre. 
Sure, it allows for you to engage enemies in combat and utilizes an interesting tab target rock paper scissors break combat system. It has a large world to explore dungeons to run a very simple yet effective unique graphical style but it also allows for you to get a job, rebirth your character entirely and start from level 1 and just create so many opportunities to craft your social life that just aren't really present anywhere else. Period Chronicles was supposed to further elaborate on and highlight this unique style of gameplay, but unfortunately, instead, we're left with no definitive successor at present, which is fine because, you know, Mabinogi is still a fantastic game. Maple Story. Oh, okay, you know what? Let's just assume here that a lot of these MMOs are fairly unique in some aspect. Maple Story is no different. Yes, it is an anime MMO. Also, much like Dungeon Fighter, the game features a horizontal style of play. You can move horizontally across the screen, you can jump up and down various different levels. It utilizes a type of gameplay that isn't traditionally used within MMOs, and it works. It features a crazy array of wild looking abilities, fast action combat, too many classes and subclasses to really delve into a ridiculous narrative. Like I'm not even kidding here guys. This is by far one of the best narratives in the genre. It doesn't take itself at all remotely seriously and that allows for one of some of the best told stories that I've seen. And unlike Dungeon Fighter, you can see a plethora of other players around out in the world. As this is a segregated MMO, loading screens separating zones, but zones are open for players to move through. This is the second MMO that I ever played directly after I left Tales of Pirates. I spent a total of two years within Perfect World, and I spent thousands of dollars on cosmetics and HP and MP charms. This was at the time I played it back in 2008, one of the best looking MMOs that I'd ever seen. It had a completely open world. It had no loading screens, no segregated zones, nothing. Everything, with the exception of dungeons, was accessible and doable with a group of players. The game is honestly still one of the better quality games out there. Not in terms of pay to win or free to play friendliness, but it's tap target combat, it's use of individual statistics to custom build your character. Heck, even it's new zones and races all look incredible. And as a direct result of that, it's old zones and it's old races all look absolutely terrible. Now, this game is just so horrendously pay to win that it almost ruins any fun you might potentially have in it. Well, Unless you're only into PvE, which is fine if you are. I'm a massive PvPer though myself, so it was very evident the difference in power between a free player and a whale. Rift used to be a paid premium title, and it shows. This was once a great quality game. Tryon and GameGo tried to stuff pay to win down players' throats, however, and they definitely destroyed a part of what made this game as great as it once was, but like most free titles, if pay to win doesn't bother you or you have no interest in PvP, then it's absolutely no issue whatsoever. And if we disregard pay to win, Rift is one of the best tab target MMOs available. It features a massive open world for players to explore a faction based PvP and race system, a deep, rich narrative, fantastic quality graphics. If handled better, this could have been the number one fully free to play MMORPG. Alas, while the game is still a lot of fun, it just doesn't quite hit that mark. This one is for those of you with a certain cultured inclination. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Honestly, this game is pretty basic. You have a large segregated world to explore. You have a hybrid tab target action combat system that allows for you to freely use attacks without a target at times. Its world is honestly pretty flat and otherwise linear, but where this game really excels is, and I know for an MMO, this is kind of an unusual area to excel in, but it's plot. Much like Blade and Soul, Scarlet Blade has an incredibly large focus on booba, on booty, on putting your characters in the most lewd things that you could imagine, or nothing at all. And that is how it has managed to live on for so many years after being shut down via private server. And finally, Torum Online is the only other cross-platform MMO in this list. And much like Dragon Raja, it launched as a mobile MMO exclusively, and many years later, ported on over to PC. Torum had a very successful transition, one it desperately needed, as this game honestly plays incredibly well on PC. This isn't your typical MMO, on the contrary, it's something else entirely. It's like a, a JRPG 
that you tactically play with other players. So, you know, I guess a, a good comparison to make here is something akin to Final Fantasy XIV, which naturally, I mean, they're both MMOs made in Japan. These games always carry a certain level of quality to them. And much like the aforementioned title, it features a very lore-rich narrative, segregated world, and tap target combat system. Honestly, though, this game is massive and such a solid addition to the PC MMO genre that you would be doing it a disservice by disregarding it. And on the plus side, you can log in on your mobile device too. And there we have it. A list of uh, 12? Uh, maybe, maybe 14, you know what, I, I don't even know how many, too many. If you can't find an MMO to play on a low-end PC, then I'm sorry to say that you're just out of luck because one doesn't exist. Now, if you're in the market for something more recent, then I got two videos that might interest you on screen right now. You're welcome.